Good day, mates. How's it going? Today we're going to look at the Thinker Keys. And when we're thinking about Thinker Keys, we're thinking about Australia. So here's Skippy here. Don't tell me Timmy has fallen down the well again, has he? Oh dear. Okay, so the Thinker Keys were developed by an Australian researcher called Tony Ryan. And I think of all of the modern creativity techniques, the Thinker Keys are one of the really excellent sets of techniques. There's 20 of them in it, so I'm going to cover them all quite quickly for this video. So the first key is the reverse key. What the reverse key says is, swap the idea around. What should I do instead of not to? Um, what have I never seen instead of what I have seen? The, the second key, number two, is the what if key. What if there were eight days of the week instead of seven? What if wheels were square instead of round? The next key is the disadvantages. So list the shortcomings of an existing concept to identify how you might improve it or, or create it in a better way. So what's, list the disadvantages of a bus. Keep on listing the disadvantages and, the, and that, that might inspire you to create a new technique. The next technique is called combination. That's key number four. Can we combine two things together? So if we add a chair and a microwave, what do we get? Uh, a chair with a microwave built in or a, micro, a chair shaped microwave. However, we want to combine two ideas, but concept combination is a very powerful approach to creativity. The next key, which is key number five, is called the bar key, B-A-R, which stands for bigger, add, or replace, and it's somewhat like scamper. Bigger means what would happen if we made a part of the thing bigger. So let's say we're talking about the bus. What would happen if we made all the bus seats bigger, or what would happen if we made all the bus wheels bigger? Add is what can we add to a bus to improve it? So often when I do this with my students, they say, can we add a bar to the bus, which may be, or what can we replace? So is there something in the bus now that we can replace? What if we replaced all the seats with bean bags or hammocks or something like that? How would that change things? The sixth key is called the alphabet key, and this is a really effective technique, I think. It asks you to create a list of words, A to Z, about the topic you're thinking of. So just for an example, I'll do computers. So I'll think of 26 words about computers, each one starting with a different letter. So we could say A for Apple, B for bugs, software bugs, C for CPU, D for database, E could be electricity, um, F for floppy disks, that's a bit old fashioned, G for, I don't know, gigabytes, H for hardware, I for input, uh, J for Java, the Java programming language, K for keyboard, L for language again maybe, M for megabyte since we've done gigabyte, N for network, O for operating system, P for PC, Q for quantum computing, R for risk, risk chips, S for software, T for testing, U for user interfaces, V for versioning of software, W for www World Wide Web, X for XML, Y for Yahoo, and Z for a zip file or something like that. It's just to try and think of the topic and do the A, B, C, D, E, F, G for that topic. It's a really fun and really informative exercise, I think. The seventh key is called the variations key. So list the alternative ways you can do something. So let's say it's telling the time. List as many different ways as you can of telling the time. The uh, eighth tool is called a picture tool, where you just draw a simple diagram of anything and then ask people to explore that diagram, suggest what, it, what, it, what it, 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 it gives them in terms of ideas and things like that. A simple picture is a good idea usually. The ninth key is the prediction key, so it's telling the future. And the future is where we will all spend most of the rest of our lives, so predicting the future is something that is of interest to everybody. So we could imagine what will college be like in 30 years' time? Or what do you think the big, next big development in your program of study is going to be? Or things like that. And that's a fun exercise for students to do uh, as a break in the middle of a lecture. Uh, the different juices key is number 10. So what different juices can we use an object for? So let's say a balloon. We know what balloons are used for. Um, what other things could we use a balloon for? We could use fill it with water. We could use it as a shower cap. There's lots of different ways, so take an object and say that's relevant to your program of study, what other ways could you use it? The 11th key is called the ridiculous key, so it's to make a statement that's virtually impossible to do and see whether you could do it or not. So let's say something like, 
why can't we power our cities from conversations? So could we do that just from conversations? Could we power a city? If we all had maybe microphones and those were converting our audio into electrical impulses and then those were connected to a power grid or something like that, maybe we could actually use conversations or jogging or something to power a city. Who knows? But everybody would have to wear probably a substantial Iron Man suit for it to work. Number 12 is the commonality in keys. So pick any two items and list what they have in common. So let's say a dog and a table. A dog and a table both have four legs. Um, they were both often found in homes. Uh, both need cleaning occasionally. Uh, and both have owners. So there's a lot of things that they have in common. So to pick any two diverse objects and think about what they have in common. The next one is a fun one. It's called the question key, where you're given the answer and list five questions that might produce that answer. So let's say the answer is key. Um, how do you open locks could be one question. Somebody who sings badly is said to be off what? Um, the stone on the top of an arch in, in any um, building is called what? It's the what stone, it's the keystone. Uh, in, in, in the theatre, the light that lights, the principal light that lights a scene is called the what light. It's the key light. And what did Tony Ryan, the Australian researcher, suggest there are 20 of? Keys. The next key is number 14. It's called the brainstorming key. So it's to state a problem and then brainstorm as many solutions as possible to it. So let's say our problem is encouraging people to read more books. And we want to brainstorm as many different ways we could encourage people to read books as possible. Maybe we could get the government to ban television for two days a week. Maybe we could pay people to read books. Maybe we could make books very cheap to buy. Maybe we could hide a golden ticket or 500 euro inside of one book. Or maybe we could have once a month a free download of, of a lot of popular ebooks or something like that. But think of as brainstorm as many variations of how to get the idea working as possible. We're going on to number 15 now, and thanks for hanging in there with me. Number 15 is the inventions key, to invent something new. Let's say we invent a new type of key. Let's say we invent a new way to light a room. Let's say we invent a new way to wash dishes. Whatever it is, just to invent something new. The next technique is number 16, and it's called the brick wall key. To say something that's completely indisputable, and then argue about it. So let's say the statement is, what goes up must come down. And I, wa I want you to think of as many different arguments as to when what co goes up must come down is wrong. Not in outer space is one way of thinking about it. If it goes up or gets stuck, it's not going to come down. If the thing that goes up is lighter than air, it's probably not going to come down for a good while. And one thing that doesn't go up but doesn't come down is taxes. So when taxes go up, they definitely don't come down, I'm afraid. All right, we're getting to the last few now. So number 17 is the construction key. The construction key is to build something. And I think it's very good for students just to get their hands dirty and build something. So construction key, we might take random items like sellotape, paper, uh, drinking straws and things like that. And a common exercise is to build a container that will hold an egg that you can throw it out a window and the egg will not break with common materials like that. There's another one to use, it's called the spaghetti tower challenge, to, to use uncooked spaghetti to build a tower and ho hold a marshmallow on top of it and to see can you build it in such a way with sellotape that the spaghetti tower won't fall down. Number 18 is the forced relationship keys. So that's to build something to solve a problem with unusual materials. So let's say I've got a mobile phone, a hairbrush, a DVD and some lipstick. Could I use those materials to build a fire alarm or something like that? So take a bunch of random materials and think of a way of building a specific goal with those unusual materials. Okay, number 19 is the alternative material. So it's to do a common task, but in an unusual way. Let's say to brush your teeth without a toothbrush. Let's say to tell the time without a clock. Let's say to cut the grass without a lawnmower or to light fire without matches. So again, think of different ways of doing very common tasks. And our final key is number 20. It's the interpretation key. So it's to create an unusual scenario 
and come up with multiple explanations from it. So let's say I'm, I've come to school and the goalposts for the football pitch have been removed. I want to come up from explanations as to what happened. It could be that a car backed into the post and it splintered it so it was too dangerous, so I had to take the post down. It could be that the local football team had to borrow the posts because they're having a match. It could be that there's a new building being built on that field. It could be that there was a jousting match over the weekend and they needed some not dangerous jousts or something like that. Whatever it is anyway, we consider as many alternatives as possible. All right, so that was Tony Ryan's 20 Thinker Keys. Thank you very much for your attention and we'll see you for the next episode. Thank you.